Hi guys, okay, so study spaces video, right? Uh, when you come into the life sciences, because Jibbit Hill is so far away from central campus, a lot of times if you've got say an hour or two between lectures, it just gets really convenient to stay up here and study. That being said, some people prefer quiet, some people prefer a little background noise. So I'm just gonna go through and kind of film all of the different study spaces that there are up here at Jibbit Hill. of the cafe, I'd say, the Dibbeth Cafe, so it's got high tables, big tables, um, and this is actually a really great place for studying because you've got these kind of secluded areas for a big group of products sort or of anything with the lights, um, the plugs and the electronics, and it's, it can get pretty noisy here during the day, but obviously as you can see now, it kind of dies down. And so through these doors, we're entering into the main cafe, which as you can probably hear is quite noisy. So I'll give you the box, we've got lots of tables here, <laughs> um, couches area over there. The further end of the cafe you go, it kind of I, I like studying in the cafe now. I think it gives a really good studious kind of vibe. There's these couches over here as well, so if you're in here and you need to charge, we've got wall chargers over there. This is just cozy. I've spent multiple nights, and when I say nights, I mean until like 11 p.m. in here with friends. So this is the bio cafe. Study place number one. So with the bio cafe, um, like I said, it's noisy, but it's one of my preferred study places because I like studying in an environment that has a lot of people in it. That being said, it's not for everyone. So another study place is actually one of the computer rooms. We're about to see that next. So this is computer room, computer room B052. It's also where I take all of my tests, actually. It is key card access only, but the doors are automatic. As you can see, there's little computers in here. These are desktop computers. This is one of the MCL suites. So this is a good place if you have an assignment that you want to do, you need to use a computer, you need to something. Here is a place to do it. Any place on a trip, and we're just going in order of where things are located really at this point. It's kind of like this central area when you first enter Gibbet Hill. So you enter the campus over there through those doors. And when you come in, you'll see these kind of stair chairs. So if you're looking for a more casual setting, um, sitting alone, these are really nice place, so usually you get people waiting for lectures up here. But there's some seating and some tables. It's also where lunch is good to have, which is quite nice. And following that, we're going to go into the Biomed grid, and I'm going to show you guys that. It's sort of like a mini version of the library, you could say. Again, Biomed grid is key card access, and automatic doors. Okay, so here is the Biomed grid, and it's quite small, it's like a mini library. Over here you've got desks and also a medical clinical practical area, so I'm assuming this is more for med students, I haven't actually used it. don't think I will this year, um, but if you need to rent it out, like practice being in a clinic. We've got books, relevant, obviously they're all life science, medical based, and yeah, there's some computers, there's a Mac in the far corner, otherwise they're mostly Dells. There's also this sort of upper area, as you can see, spiral staircases uh, lead up to this kind of secret little study area. I'd actually never been up to this area before filming this video, so it was an interesting discovery for me. I'll probably end up spending a lot of time studying up here in the future as well. And this is the Biomed Grid. So, as you saw, I did a voiceover with the Biomed Grid, and the reason that I did a voiceover was because it's pretty silent in there, kind of like a library, and I felt like I shouldn't speak while I was in there. But anyways, the next destination that we're going to is Lecture Hall, actually. I'm gonna see if it's empty, hopefully. And, um... Yeah, if it's empty, I'll go in there and show you. This is GLT-1, which is main lecture hall. Let's see. I think there's a lecture. Yeah, there's a lecture, so we won't go in there. But basically, GLT-1 is like the big main lecture theater. Um, it's where our most first year lectures will happen, but... As you get into term two, you actually have lectures in a different hall as well. 
but uh, when the lecture halls are free, they do sometimes make good study spaces. As you're probably seeing, I'm pushing a lot of buttons to get through doors. All of the doors here are automatic, and they're either buttons or keys. So, off to the third study space. I mean fourth. I'm in fifth, and the fifth study space, which we are walking to, is actually a silent study space. And there's multiple ways to get through it. I'm kind of taking the long way just because I was already walking in this direction anyways. But one of the fastest ways probably is to go through the Tudor corridor, which has all of your, most of the Tudor's rooms, like offices. Really quickly, I will show you guys GLT2, which is the second lecture floor, because I believe there's no lecture. There's no lecture, right. So, here is the lecture hall. It's kind of dark. As you can see, typical lecture theater setting. So, rows and rows of seats, big projector, and the main screen. So I've had three lecture, four lectures in here already, and it's just typical like any other lecture hall. Yeah. Off we go to the silent study space. So I thought I was going to have to do a voiceover, but clearly not. As you can see, it's completely empty. But this is the hidden quiet study room. And as told to me by one of the main lecturers and director of the course, it's a hidden gem. You've got computers, desks, complete and utter silence, charging points, and I mean a view outside if you really want to look at the outdoors that you can't even see. But yes, so this is Study space number five. Personally, I have not yet studied here. But that's because I'm not the kind of person who studies well in isolation. So I haven't found myself here yet. I do know my friends have studied here and they seem to have liked it. So this is an option, always remember that. It may take you a while to find it, but just remember, ask anyone. Most people know where it is. With most of the study spaces, they're known to most people, so you will be able to find them eventually. Either you find them on your own by just walking around and discovering, or you ask, because people aren't mean. So I'm going back to the way that I should have come here, which is through the corridor of tutors. So you can see all these doors. These are different professors, and a lot of them are personal tutors. Um, we'll walk by my personal tutor's room in just a second. You put yourself out. Uh, there we go, two professors. So this is my tutor. Uh, for the sake of, I haven't asked her if I'm allowed to feature her in the video or not, so I'm not gonna give you guys her name. But she's a lovely woman. Um, the way that tutor, groups work is it's a small group of people that you're just gonna be with for the next three years and every Friday morning we have like, like a seminar but we don't really call them seminars we call them tutorials with this tutor and you go over either something relevant to the topic or similar like that okay so study space number six I believe is number six is the big main ICL suite and it is a Mac suite so if you're not familiar with Mac you may not like it at first but you actually do get workshops in here and it's good for printing and other things like this as well. Keycard access as usual so as you can see a lot of computers everywhere all over the place and like I said, they're all Apple, um, but th they work, it's the same as all the computers on campus. You sign in through your login, you use them, and similar to the ICL suite downstairs, if 
this room is empty. It's a good study space. There's, for printing, there's a printer right over there. And if you're con comfortable with Mac more so than Dell, it may be even better of a study space than the Central Campus Library or the ICL suite downstairs. So those were all of the, I'd say, Gibbet Hill study spaces. Yep. No worries. That I could think of, um, like I said, aside from actual lecture halls, uh, there's really not much else, nowhere else for undergraduates to study. There is the atrium in the building next to us, but that is for postgrads only. We're not welcome there yet. Well, eventually, one day, one day we'll be postgrads, maybe. Okay, so hopefully this video kind of gave you an insight on if you're a life sciences student or a medical student at the University of Warwick, you now kind of know where you can study specific to you. No other course is allowed in here because it's all key card access, as you guys clearly saw. Um, yeah, so if you're ever up here at Gibbet Hill and you don't know where to study, just rewatch the video. Uh, until next time.